Dr. Craig Evans is one of the foremost scholars alive today in the New Testament in the study of Jesus, his life and death and resurrection. Uh, Dr. Evans has lectured at Cambridge, Oxford, Princeton, and Yale. He's been interviewed by almost every media outlet, including the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. He served as a consultant for the Bible television miniseries viewed by over 100 million North Americans. He's a prolific writer. He's published more than 70 books, hundreds of scholarly journals and reviews, and he is the Dean of Christian Thought at Houston Baptist University. Dr. Evans, thanks so much for helping us think through, I think, the connection of the mind and the heart, which is sometimes, you know, we're there in mind, but we were in heart, but we think, hey, does this really connect academically, you know, in terms of scholarship, in terms of research? And I think your evidence in your life's works has shown that really Christianity stands up to intellectual rigor. And on that note, um, we're marking almost Good Friday. That's tomorrow. Soon we'll be at Easter Sunday. What are some of the most plausible arguments in your mind uh, for, that the resurrection of Jesus actually happened? Well, I think there are several lines of argument. Number one, the Gospels tell us that the women are the ones who first find the tomb empty and see right. the risen Jesus. A fiction not, is not going to do that. Given the low regard women had in antiquity, especially as witnesses to something mm. important, why, if you're going to make up a story, why not have the apostles? Why not have the Sanhedrin? Why not the very right. people who condemned Jesus go to the tomb and see it empty and then see Jesus risen? So there's a realism there. It's a, a telling it like it is. The other thing that persuades me is that the disciples weren't looking for a crucified and then resurrected Messiah. Right. This whole paradigm was hard for them. They never to, really understood it, did they? No. In fact, and you have one of the most embarrassing stories in the Gospels where Peter actually rebukes Jesus for having pre predicted his own suffering and death. Peter, Peter rejected it. So that tells me the disciples aren't going to cook up a story like this. Right. Had Jesus died and simply stayed dead and there was no resurrection, the movement would have ended. They would have gone on to something else. They had something to believe Isn't that kind in. of what's happening in Luke 24? Where sure. they're just, okay, we're going to go back to fishing. And, yeah. and then Jesus shows up resurrected and surprises them. Yeah. And so it is the surprise of Easter that tells me that uh, there's something behind this. Now, of course, the conversion of Paul. Right. I mean, he's an enemy of the church. He doesn't believe in Jesus at all. He doesn't believe in the resurrection. He's opposed to the early church, wants to destroy it. Then he meets the risen Jesus and his life is turned around 180 degrees. So that's the kind of evidence that tells me, hey, there's really something here. This is not some myth or some story that somebody made up years yeah. later. I want to go back to where you started too with the women as the witnesses. I think in our culture today, we would say, well, of course, a woman saw it. But back then, what you're saying is that was revolutionary um, because women were not even really seen as credible uh, in those days. And so if you were making up a story, you would not make it up that way if you wanted the story to gain traction. Yep, exactly right. Yeah. So the fact that they, they tell it, uh, they tell it like it is. Like it or not, maybe mm -hmm. it's not good apologetic, but that's what happened. And right. Mary Magdalene was there. And so there's a commitment to truth. That's what it tells me. So the most logical explanation that the story might be true is you would not make it up. Like this is actually what happened. He met Mary and Mary told Peter. It, you're right. It is rather embarrassing when you, when you look at it as a narrative unless it's true. A fictional story would have been different. Gotcha. Wow. That's so, so helpful. Dr. Evans, thank you so much.